Well, welcome back to Vintage Tech. I've got a uh, little interesting project here to share with you today. It's a little steam engine, a toy steam engine that I picked up at an estate sale and uh, been working on it. And this video will chronicle the, the test and repair and then the final run of the little steam engine. This little unit runs on alcohol, kerosene, or in my case, lamp oil. It uses a little um, lantern base that the oil and the wick is adjustable wick, like a lantern, and it just snaps in on top. And then it has a boiler tank, which has water in it, and you can see the water level on the the water level gauge there, glass tube, and it has the flywheel, a little heavy steel flywheel, uh, a crank and piston, and then it toggles back and forth here, and there's a valve on each end of this frame, and the steam pressure either pushes the piston down or sucks the piston back up, actually it pushes the piston up or pushes it down depending on the, pi the piston is inside here and it bobs up and down depending on the pressure of the two lines. So also there's a pressure relief valve here so it regulates the speed of the motor as well as regulating the pressure of the tank. So the, there's a weight, you can see the weight there that fits down inside of a seat, a valve and a seat. And you can adjust this weight to adjust the pressure of the tank and, and thus adjust the speed of the motor. And then uh, some of these have little whistles uh, that uh, will uh, scream when the pressure gets high. You can turn that on and off. So, um, this uh, particular model is what we're going to be running today. I've got a couple of other ones here. An electric model, which is uh, by the Watt Victor Company. And the Watt Victor, I 3D printed a, a wheel here just to see if I could get it to run a little faster. But it's the same principle. It has a glass tube for the water level. It uses a weight uh, for pressure regulation in the top. And then uh, it's got the little motor, steam uh, valve motor control there, and the crankshaft, and you can see how that works. So this is an electric model. And then um, I have a, I haven't done a video on this one yet, a Jensen steam engine that is a little more elaborate, and it uses fuel pellets and there's a remainder of a fuel pellet in there you can see and those burn really hot and they sit into that that burner underneath the boiler this has a pressure relief on it as well and it's a pop-off valve and it'll just pressure relief spring loaded and it has a whistle just like the other one and uh, the uh, uh, has a speed control here on the the unit so you can throttle the speed based on the pressure coming out of the tank and going down to the motor. This one actually runs really well and pretty fast. That, um, that fuel pellet really gets hot and it boils the water pretty well in this. Some of these units came with a little water gauge on this end of the tank. My uh, model 68, what is that? Model 89, sorry, model 89. Uh, did not have that on it but this is a nice little steam engine as well but today we're going to do this one this uh, liquid fuel engine so we're going to fiddle with it the uh, wick flame creates quite a bit of soot as you'll find out in my shack and uh, produces quite a bit of smoke and uh, and it actually set my fire alarm off a couple of times, but uh, I finally did get it running, spoiler alert, and you'll see that in the video as well. So let's go ahead and get started in the shop getting this thing going. We had to do quite a bit of things to get it to work, 
actually work. It would just barely start, but there were several leaks, so the pressure wasn't building up really well in the tank, and uh, we finally corrected that. Hope you enjoyed this video. Yeah, here we go. Um, I don't know how this is going to work. These things usually spit back. Okay. We're not spilling this all over the bench. All right, let's check the, the base, make sure it's not leaking. Okay, no evidence of any leaks so far. That lamp oil may eat away at the corrosion if there's any in the base and that eventually leak. The same is true with the boiler. Boiler, unless they've been emptied, the boiler uh, rusts badly even though it is copper. It doesn't rust, it corrodes and it will burn through uh, the right circumstances and chemicals. All right, I'm going to just prime this L, uh, wick. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and use up this oil. If I get too high, oh, it's just about to here. It's not, it's not, we don't have enough here to fill this up too full. does have a hole in it for vent I guess so let's light that and see what kind of <coughs> what kind of flame we'll have on it Okay, so it's lighting and burning and stinks pretty bad. Yeah, that old sooty. My fire alarm's going to go off in here for sure. Okay, so we've got a flame. So now we've got a clean thing for water here. Because this water is already boiling, it's going to try to spit out of the bulb a little bit. We should be able to see the... Um, and get out of the way there should be able to see the water in the 
boiler water level tube. And I, because this water is super hot, it might save us a little bit of time in uh, heating up the boiler. There's some water coming up in the tube. See it? We'll just put it we'll put it up about halfway or so. There we go. Got a little bubble in it. Um, let me see if I can put some pressure on it. Well, the motor's working. Look at the motor turn when I give it a little burst of pressure. And the boiler tube is leaking, which is not surprising. They use a packing material, and when that packing material dries out, it will leak pretty badly. But typically, in real boilers, once that packing material gets wet and heated up, it uh, seals. It seals. So it's still dripping. Um, <coughs> yeah, we got. Yeah, our water levels up there. Okay. There we go. I don't remember which way is open and which way is closed. I believe that's open. Typically the ball valve, when it's in line, uh, parallel with the... Yes, that's correct. So that's open. Yeah, that's open and that's closed. Just for kicks. Let's see if we can get it to whistle. Clearly, that's cleaned out now, and it does whistle. Okay, turn it off. Put the chimney back on. Now we need to oil a few things here. And I just happen to have actual boiler oil that I got from the Walesco company for these other uh, boilers that I have. So we're going to put some on the uh, there we go. A little there. I don't have any idea whether this is going to how this is going to work. And I'm not going to use this oil on the mechanical parts. I'm going to use some gun oil. Okay, and I forgot to put some of this Walesco on the piston shaft. Or the the uh, steam rod. There we go. Okay, it's actually spinning a lot better now. Water is pretty hot. Now this locks in place. 
and turns and latches. Okay, now we're going to crank the heat up. And we're just going to let it sit here. You see the glow of the, the flame. We're just going to let it sit here. Look at the smoke. Too hot. Look at the smoke coming out the stack. See it? So it's going to set the fire alarm off for sure. Let's crank it down. There we go. Yeah. That's a little better. Might have been a little too aggressive. And I'm going to add, oops, I'm sorry. I'm going to add some light to the subject here. There we go. I made a little light here. Let me zoom out. I made a little generator out of uh, a 3D printed a generator using a cassette motor and an LED and uh, you can drive it right off of the, the uh, flywheel it's got a pulley there and you can drive this little light and I don't remember how fast it has to spin to, to make the little LED burn but um, you can buy these, but they, they sell for, believe it or not, 150 bucks. I think. Of course, they're not as plastic as this is, but for my purposes, uh, I just designed this from scratch and just really wanted something to uh, be able to hook up to the steam engines. All right, let's see what kind of uh, temperatures we have now. Hundred and sixty, getting there. Now I'm running the flame pretty low. I'm gonna bump it up a little bit. It's gonna smoke, but I may have to stop the video if my fire alarm goes off. I'm trying to get the glare off of the about 175 degrees. Let's see what it looks like without the lights on. That's pretty cool. Of course, you know that if you know anything about oil lanterns, almost all oil lanterns will smoke if you over overdo it with the flame. Alright, we're going to bump the flame up just a little more and let it smoke. Let's see if we can get a good hot boiler going here. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. It doesn't like that soot, does it? Let's listen to the whistle. Okay, whistle's working. Pressure regulator's working. Have a little bit of leaking going on here, but should start up here in a second.
Almost. A few more seconds. There's quite a few, there's a little bit of leaking going on. Um, the uh, crank, or the uh, con connecting rod is um, leaking. Still, it needs to be at boiling, of course. And we're putting out quite a bit of soot here. But it's going to take off in a second, I think. Okay, it's really starting to fizz now. Yeah, see we turned the heat down. And turn it up a little more. It's going to really start sitting pretty bad. Okay, we got whistle. Okay. So we got steam, and you can see steam leaking out the control the piston. Really wants to go, doesn't it? Okay, we we got plenty of water in the boiler because you can see the you can see the water level in the tank. Got good pressure, but our motor is very our cylinder is very dirty and inefficient. I was hoping maybe the steam would help clean it up. And uh, we might want to tighten up the so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna kill the power, kill the flame, and uh, let things kind of Resolve here. Cool off. We'll tighten up the motor, clean things up a little around that. Oops. And um, this um, this motor right here. Come on, camera. Doesn't like the heat, does it? Yeah, can't handle the heat. There we go. This, these flanges here and here have to seal in order for the motor to work. And you can look at a previous video that I did on how this steam engine works. It alternates back and forth, opening and closing. These work like valves when this wobbles back and forth. And... Um, Anyway, this has to be tight, but not so tight to keep it from moving. has to have the, the oil on it. And um, the, the seal on this seems to be working great. That was not blowing steam. There's a little bit of leaking going on right here, but the pressure regulator was working. And there was no steam leaking out of the whistle water was dripping out of this gland nut pretty badly but like I said once it gets wet and uh, you can see it's kind of a goopy material there um, once that gland nut gets wet it um, it may reseal after it cools back off it may reseal we'll see um, this seems to be oiled uh, the uh, shaft itself seems to be free now. It's oiled up pretty good. The uh, wrist pin right there is nice and flexible. The crank, seal, and piston might be a little bit rust or uh, corroded, and, and I mean it probably wouldn't be rusted because there's stainless steel and copper, brass or whatever. So it is pretty loose, and I don't know um, 
there's usually not any kind of a seal on any of this in here. It's just machined perfectly. So we'll tighten this up. We may take these off and uh, sand them just a little bit with some emery cloth. And uh, once everything cools off. We're in the shop, in the garage, and I want to show you what I've done. And get this on the camera here, straddle the camera. I resoldered the uh, lines there, pulled this off and installed a gasket on the pressure relief valve. And I repacked the uh, water level uh, glass with sealant. So, and I've oiled everything up. And then I sanded uh, the uh, cylinder faces uh, that mate here on the compression chamber. So let's, uh, let's just hook it up to some air to start with. So I've got a compressed air here. And um, we're just going to let's see, I'll put, yeah, I'll put a little bit of hose here. Okay. And uh, let's see if we can get all this on camera. sure you can see the let me zoom out that's a little better all right okay. pressure regulator is lifting up here Alrighty, we got all the repairs made. Put uh, rubber O-rings on the uh, gland nuts, and uh, we shaved the valve body and uh, cylinder down and mated those surfaces. We resoldered the uh, lines here. Put a gasket and O-ring on the two top pieces to seal them, and. Um, so uh, we should, uh, should be able to get some decent pressure. We'll let it warm up here. It'll take a couple of minutes, of course, to uh, boil. And we've got it, the flame cranked up pretty hot right now. As you can see, the smoke pouring out of the chimney. There it goes. 